Well, here we go on my attempt at Ground Branch's depot map. Now, I've kind of changed this a little after some feedback I got about my last effort. Now, I thought I was being clever in the way that uh, I thought I was up in the ante with the last game on uh, Small Time. I thought I was making it a little bit more difficult, but in fact, some of the feedback I got pointed out that by using the suppressor, I was actually making it a lot easier for myself. Now, I know that sounds pretty logical and obvious, but what they actually meant was that in this particular uh, outing of Ground Branch, the AI are less attuned to the noises made by a suppressor, so they kind of ignore them. So it gives you a bit of a, an unfair advantage, really, if you use a suppressor. So this time around, what I've actually done is I picked a non-suppressed weapon as my primary. I've gone for the HK416, which is one of my favourites. It's an AR variant with a modified piston for increased reliability. Now, I was taking a little bit of a speculative uh, long-range shot there. This is actually the shortened carbine version of the HK416. And I'm not using a magnified scope, I'm using a pretty bog-standard red dot on magnified. So I was probably <laughs> um, chancing my arm there by trying to take out that guy at that range. Now at this point it's probably a good idea for me to admit that I've made a pretty fundamental schoolboy error in my uh, setup there. But I'm not going to mention what it is, I'll see if you can actually tell what I have done wrong. In the meantime, I'll continue to hammer away with these long range shots. Well, relatively long range shots when you take in consideration the carbine that I'm using. The AI seems to be very obliging in lining up for these long range shots here without uh, taking any cover even though they're coming under fire. But again, I, I really have to point out that this is a pre-release early access game and the AI hasn't been completely fleshed out properly. So they can be a little bit janky on occasions. Having said all this, uh, this isn't really what I want to talk about today. Um, the perceived weaknesses in this early access game because any criticism like this is a little bit unfair when it's a work in progress. What I actually want to talk about is how much I'm actually enjoying this game and how much I can see the potential in it. Um, and one of the other things is how lovely this particular map is. I'm really enjoying this one. The lovely foliage in the, the kind of forest area is absolutely brilliant and um, I've had such a good time playing on this one. As I say, essentially it's a woodland map with a warehouse complex in the middle of it which consists of two large warehouses and one office building. I began at the northern spawn point, the helipad, and then worked my way down across the river just north of the buildings themselves. Yeah, that was much more like the range of engagement I had in mind with this carbine. Now my main problem here is there's quite a few enemy patrols working their way around the woodland perimeter. Now this uh, ground is quite undulating, it's very nice. There's lots of little hillocks and mini dips, so you don't tend to see the enemy until the last minute. Now is that a tree or is that an enemy? Well, better safe than sorry. Okay, now the tricky bit. I'm going to have to exit the woodland area and move across what is starting to be a little bit more open ground. Now, aside from being spotted by some enemy who are lurking in the woods, I'm now worried about what can see me through those windows or from that rooftop. Hmm. Right, what to do now? Well, I don't have a plan. I haven't played this map that much, but the only strategy I have in my head is seek the higher ground. I'm going to see if I can get to the top of this roof, and that way I'll be able to view over the rest of the map and then make a plan from there. Uh, 
Okay, best to reload here because I don't want you to do my usual trick of having an empty magazine as I come across an enemy. Alright, <laughs> well, I really thought I would have seen someone by now, surely inside the building at least. Um, this is a bit disconcerting because uh, the place looks deserted and of course it won't be. Still, good luck for me because I've managed to get up to the roof without too much trouble. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but coming up those stairs was a bit glitchy. That's happened a few times now, where you almost feel like you're going backwards a little bit. Hmm, having gotten up here, I now realise the irony of me choosing a non-magnified sight and a carbine. What I'd give for a nice sniper rifle and a telescopic sight. Yeah, I'm kind of tempted, but uh, that looks like instant death. This is laughable. I can actually barely see these guys and the red dot is actually covering up most of them. Well, I don't seem to be bothering them and they're definitely not interested in bothering me for some reason. So let's try something else. Come on someone, pay me attention for goodness sake. <laughs> Is someone not going to raise the alarm? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this whole thing about a non-suppressed weapon getting the attention of the enemy more than a suppressed weapon is officially baloney. It might actually just be easier for me to climb down from the top of this building and climb up to the top of the other building to actually kill these guys. Sorry about this, I'm determined to get them now that I've started. This is crazy. Sorry. <laughs> he is literally just standing there and mocking me. I don't actually, I can't think of anything sort of like uh, appropriate to say about the state of the AI at the moment. <laughs> uh, it's a work in progress. <laughs> This does look lovely though. This is really nice. Another cheeky little blighter it seems intent on ignoring me. <laughs> it's typical, I, I should have stuck to that magnified ACOG. I would have had them by now. You would have thought that someone had noticed that all this uh, random shooting that's going on by now. <laughs> uh, shouldn't there be guard dogs and alarms going off? <laughs> uh, I think uh, what Ground Branch have gone for here is the famous German guards from World War II films. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I don't mean, I, I shouldn't say it.
Oh, for goodness sake, dead man's click. When am I going to start counting these rounds properly? Jeez. <laughs> well, I, I noticed this on the uh, oil tanker map as well, and I, I did mention it in the map, that video, that the glass they seem to make in this game <laughs> must be about two foot thick. <laughs> you need about four shots to actually break through it. <laughs> it's funny because one of the things I've done since I started playing these Ground Branch games is I reinstalled the original Ghost Recon and went back and played some of the original uh, missions in that because I, I thought it would be interesting to compare a fully fleshed out AI that uh, I seem to fondly remember from that time and compare it to what the AI is like in Ground Branch now. And by now, in Ghost Recon, there would definitely be an AI trying to get to me and flank me. I'm really looking forward to the next Ground Branch update because I know for a fact from the devs development blog that uh, the AI is something they're working really hard on at the moment to try and get it up to that next level in its ability to react to your presence and counteract your attacks and your counter movements. Now I did think about some sort of entry here. <laughs> But did I really want to expend about five or six rounds just to break the glass? I had kind of thought, um, maybe even putting up on the forum, that does the operative want to have some sort of entry tools, some sort of crowbar or hatchet, something like that. I, I know special forces teams do carry uh, specialised equipment like that specifically for breaking into um, or breaching, you know, not breaching as in explosive bre breaching, but just breaching things like windows and doors that are barred. Um, is that something that the game might want to, to incorporate? Uh, the, my main worry here, of course, was if I do expend those rounds breaking this window to gain access, will I then, of course, alert any AI that's inside the building? Um, which I'd rather not do. The, I mean, the other simpler way of getting around this situation would make windows that are openable you know, uh, slide open windows or things like this. But there you go, that's that's just another thing on the wish list, isn't it? At the end of the day, I, I took the easier option, which was to climb down, wander around the building, and find an easier access around the other side. This did actually raise a very good point. And that is a major part of Ground Branch's early access philosophy is that the community that have bought into this game as part of the early access release or even before that as part of the Kickstarter campaign, which is how I got involved, want to take a very lively two-way discussion with the devs over on the Ground Branch website. The forum gives players a chance to highlight issues and make suggestions about improvements or interesting ways that the gameplay might be developed. And one of the really cool things about this is that the developers themselves are very active and responsive in the ongoing discussions about how the game is actually going to progress. This is how Ground Branch is slowly but very definitely moving consistently and continuously in what the players perceive as being the right direction. Because there is a sort of informal democracy or consensus to the game's development. Now, I don't want to over-egg the level to which the players actually have a say in this. The vision is most definitely that of Blackfoot Studios, but the devs are listening and they're very willing to engage with the players. This is incredibly refreshing, really, and I've actually posted up a couple of suggestions or comments, and it's been really nice that the devs have come back and responded positively. Um, now that's not to say what I say is going to be implemented, of course, but it's just nice that someone's actually listening. Now once again here, what I'm going to try and do is go for the high ground by getting on top of the roof. 
We'll just chance a wee peek through the window, shall we? Now, I don't usually hammer away in full automatic that often. Uh, I tend to prefer semi-automatic fire, but um, <laughs> that seemed to do the job, and besides which, it solved that problem about breaking the window. Now, one thing I've never absolutely been clear about, uh, particularly from the point of view of computer games, is how the flight path of a travelling bullet might be affected by any materials that come in between the, the shooter and the actual target. For example, the case that we've just seen where I'm firing through glass, how would that affect the flight path of the bullet? Now, I know we're just talking about the game here, but from a point of view of realism, it does make you think, how many of those bullets that I've just fired actually accurately hit the target that I was firing at? Now, historically, this was actually an issue. If you go back to the Vietnam War, the early adoption of the American M16, which is one of the earliest guns to use the 5.56mm round, one of the early complaints by the soldiers in the field was whether this new lightweight bullet was being affected by the heavy foliage in the jungle. Now, I don't know for sure what it was or whether these stories were just apocryphal, but it certainly makes you wonder whether this level of ballistic realism has been built into the game. Now, of course, I guess the only way of finding that out is to actually go on the Blackfoot forums and ask the devs whether it has or has not. Sorry, a little bit of a nerdy tangent there, but that's the sort of things I think about. Let's get back to the game and do an entry. Well, it's looking pretty clear so far. Having said that, there's bound to be someone underneath the stairs that's going to shoot me in the back when I come down them. No, nope, not in that room anyway. Okay, let's clear the other rooms. I forget what our tally is so far of uh, enemy, but um, we can't have that many left. <laughs> Famous last words there. Oh, I do like these. These these buildings are really well done. Well, that's the guys that I took out through the windows. Well, eventually. The sound environment inside here is really nice. I like everything about it, actually. The lighting's really good as well. Uh, nope, that looks like this warehouse is pretty well clear. Right, well, what we'll do is we'll double check this ground floor before moving on to the last building, which is the small office building. <laughs> right, this is uh, the bit I've mentioned in other videos where I'm getting closer and closer to the end of the mission uh, and so I get more and more tense and nervous because it's always those last remaining guys that get you. Now, I'm guessing that the majority of the remaining enemy must be inside this building. I can only imagine there's only a few more patrolling the perimeter. Yeah, I can definitely hear footsteps. 
Time to play peekaboo again. I do miss the three round bust of the MP5 submachine gun. I'm still trying to get to grips with the tap busting of full auto on a carbine or rifle. Whoa, how he didn't see me, I'll, I'll never know. <laughs> Another one of those moments. Yeah, as I suspected, there's quite a few of the enemy inside this building. Now, one of the things I meant to turn off for this particular game was the enemy kill count. You can turn that off in the, in the settings and to make it the game a bit harder it's better if you do turn it off because you're then left thinking well have or have I not killed them all so then you have to go and verify your kills uh, I can still hear footsteps upstairs I wonder how many of them are in that office upstairs What do you think the chances are that all remaining seven are in that one room? <laughs> Can I draw them out that office? Well, yeah, I kind of went for the easy option there with a the grenade. Um, but actually, I've just noticed that was probably a bad idea because that roof just above me now is uh, just chipboard, isn't it? Well, it was worth a second go. I mean, obviously... Um, it seems like uh, fragmentation grenades can't penetrate the chipwood flooring. Don't ask me how real that is, I have no idea whatsoever. Now of course the bad news there was I didn't get any kill verification. Now this illustrates the point I was making earlier, where now I know I haven't killed anybody in that office, rather than having to go and double check by verification, um, which is all part of the tactical game. Yep, as I was able to tell from that, there's no kills in that office, so the office was empty. Though, I guess she should never say never, that's why I'm double checking anyway. Hmm, seem to lost the sound effects of the metal stairs. Well, I guess that's the last building cleared then, so the remaining enemy must be out in the woods somewhere. <laughs> A little bit more tricky. Obviously, because of the good job the developers have made of the forest, these guys are going to be hard to see, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Plus, there's a quite a large area to cover. And now the question is, which way to work round? From the north going south clockwise, or work north anti-clockwise? I think because I originally started in the north, I should continue south and round clockwise. Aye aye. <laughs> I can't believe I missed him. 
Okay, I'm not going to do the obvious and uh, try and tackle him front on now he knows that I'm there. Let's uh, do a little sneaky flank and try and get, get him from behind. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Though I think it's probably wise I keep an eye out to make sure that he's not going to follow me around and get me from behind, if you know what I mean. Well, there's a bit of luck. I think he was trying to do the same thing. Actually, maybe I was giving the AI a bit more credit there than he deserved. I think he was just going back on a patrol pattern round there. Though I guess there's the possibility that there was actually two of them. So I better take this a little bit carefully. No, I'm, go I'm going to take the chance and say that he was on his own there. So let's continue our way around around the forest. This looks cracking, doesn't it, with all the little undulating hills in the woods. This would be ideal for a little uh, 5v5 team deathmatch map. you know something? I'm looking at this grass and thinking, you know, we make it such a big deal about the Unreal 4 engine, how it compares to other AAA proprietary game engines. But, do you know, I remember Battlefield 2 and the grass in that was almost non-existent compared to this. You know, how things have changed. We're spoilt, really. Okay, well, seeing as there's a lot of ground to cover here, what I'll do is fast forward and we'll just stop when we get to the action, just so you don't end up just watching me having a walk in the woods. You know, this map really makes you want to play some co-op on it. There's some terrific places to set up some ambushes, you know. I'm just wondering what this would be like to play as a night map. No, I guess it'd be nigh on impossible to see any enemy in the dark with all these trees. And I wish the maps had support more than 30 bots as a default. Well, the bad news here is I still haven't been able to find those missing five tangos, even though I've circumnavigated the perimeter and ended up back on the north side of the base where I started. The only thing I can think of doing is getting back up on top of the roof here and see if I can spot them. This is a little worrying because I actually have covered most of the ground already and now I'm beginning to worry that this may be another situation like the one I had with the oil tanker map where because of a glitch in the game I was never actually able to find that last remaining tango but five missing tangos seems very strange indeed. Let's cross our fingers and hope it's not a glitch. Well, guess what? I've actually been round uh, this map three times now and I have not been able to find those missing tangos. Um, it looks like it is another one of those glitches where they just either haven't appeared or somehow disappeared or the game has miscounted the amount of kills that I've got or whatever. Uh, I don't really understand it, but I'm five tangos down from where I should be and I can't find them. So I'm just going to call this a moral victory. <laughs> well, there's nothing much else I can do. A shame, but there you go. This is a work in progress. These little hiccups will happen, but I'm sure Blackfoot Studios will have this sorted out for the actual game release. Thanks very much for watching. I know it's been a particularly long video, but it's been a particularly nice map, so it's been worth the grand tour if nothing else. Cheers.